Hello, I'm Matthew from Ludovox, and today we are in the Steam Forge Games booth on the SN Spielmesser with Sherwin. Hi, Sherwin. Hello. So, we're there with, with a game that you designed, yes. uh, which is Resident Evil the game. Resident Evil 2 the game, yes. So, um, tell us about the game. What kind of game is it? Uh, so, the probably easiest way to understand it is it's an adaptation of the video game, the original one. Uh, it, the format of it is more like a dungeon crawl than what you'd, uh, what you'd normally expect. But we've tried to keep very, very close to what the original game was. So there's a lot of elements in this which you would find in the original video game. So players who are familiar with it from back then will immediately find it you know, something they recognize straight away. So uh, is it a co-op game or do you try to uh, compete against one another? Uh, it's completely cooperative, so if one of the players dies, then everyone loses, which is obviously one of the bad things. Uh, there are some PvP characters which were unlocked as part of the stretch goals in our campaign, and that's a different way of playing it, a different mode, but normally, normal games would be completely cooperative. So, um, what do we try to achieve as players? Do we try to go through the scenario and kill the boss? So each scenario uh, has a different objective, whether that be to find a key so you can unlock a door at some point, whether that's to get to a certain location. Sometimes you have to kill a boss, sometimes you have to escape a boss. There's various different objectives as you go through. What are the main mechanics of the game? How do we move around? How do we act in a player turn? So uh, a player's turn is made up of three phases. Uh, the first one is the action phase, and that's when you move around, you attack things, you search for items, that sort of stuff. And the crucial thing about Resident Evil that we have here is that there's no enemy turn. Enemies react to you as you move around. So as your player moves around on this game board, for example, um, the enemies on the same game board will react to you. But if they can't see you or hear you because the doors are shut, they won't do anything. So you have to think very carefully about locking doors behind you uh, when you run through places. That will slow you down, but sometimes you don't have time for that. So you have to think very carefully, strategically about how to do bits and pieces. Um, and the last, last part of a campaign, uh, sorry, last part of a turn is to draw from the tension deck. And that's the big mechanic that drives us forward. As that counts down, it's the sort of, it's the bit where the, you know, whether the location you're in is slowly being overrun. Um, obviously, green cards, as you're drawing there, are okay. When you get to one of the yellow cards, that will force you to make a very difficult decision. If you keep going and eventually you find a red card, as we've just shown there, that's when you have a jump scare and zombies will burst through a window to attack you, that sort of stuff. Uh, what is the ratio? Does it adapt uh, according to the scenario? It will adapt according to the scenario. Each scenario has a completely unique tension deck uh, based on the events of the game uh, and also based on how difficult the level is supposed to be. So some of the earlier ones, this demo for example, is very light on the sort of red cards and the yellow ones. It's really designed more to keep people interested and sort of teach them the mechanic of how it works. Later on scenarios are very much more difficult when you've got lots of stuff jumping at you. So uh, how do you fight the monsters? and so, the zombie? Yeah, no worries. So the crucial part about Resident Evil games is that you don't, if you try to kill every single enemy, you'll run out of ammunition very, very quickly. You have to think carefully about whether you want to dodge past enemies or whether you want to try and kill them. And usually that decision comes down to how often you think you'll be going through that particular room or that location, that corridor. So one of the crucial things that we have is these, tension, uh, these dice here, which we roll, and they generally tend to either indicate if you're attacking someone, they do damage, or they push them back. Um, obviously these, you hit an enemy and nothing happens. And most part of it tends to be, depends on the weapon, how many dice you roll and what results you're looking for. So the pistol, if you roll one of these, you get one damage. If you roll one of these, you can push an enemy back. On the shotgun, which uses these red dice, there's a higher opportunity to hit, and whatever result you get, you just do two damage, because a shotgun is a more powerful weapon. And the various different weapons have lots of different properties to them. And finally, um, how do the monsters react? How do we get wounded? Yeah, absolutely. So when a zombie attacks you, so when you react to do things, like you make a gunshot or you attack an enemy, zombies will move towards you like this, and they have a move stat, which is one, as we see here, and that's how far they'll move. You have a faster enemy, like a zombie dog, it would move multiple squares towards you. If a zombie's in your square, it will try to attack you, and you're always rolling to evade with your characters. You never roll for the enemies to attack you. You're constantly, it's a very fast-paced game that's designed to sort of replicate what Resident Evil 2 is. So the players are always, uh, every given time you're trying to evade so you roll this and you're looking to get a success on one of these dice if you don't you take damage and as you take damage eventually you obviously die so drops down and then eventually dead can you heal with um, flowers yeah so as you search through the game you'll find various different items we have one here which is this green herb that enables us to heal a level uh, there are obviously more powerful items and it's Resident Evil so there are various different herbs you can combine to get a greater healing effect what about the different uh, scenarios? Uh, are you making a campaign? Uh, do we carry on with some kind of experience? 
Yep, there's a complete narrative campaign in the box. There's rules for it. So at the end of it, the scenarios are all driven narratively. It tells you through the events of Resident Evil 2. Um, as you've, you can play various different modes on that. You can reset everything if you wanted to. Alternatively, um, you can play through and keep the same ammunition, the same health levels, uh, keep the same items. There's some items you can find which you can carry on with you through different scenarios, and they let you unlock, unlock doors later on in the game, which you wouldn't be able to unlock unless you're playing in narrative campaign mode. So there are some rewards. But the game is also designed to be completely standalone if you wanted to. So if you just wanted to sit down with some friends and play a game, you can do. There's no requirement to play as part of the campaign mode. You can play them standalone scenarios. Um, when do you plan to ship it? I mean, um, it has been on Kickstarter, I believe. Uh, so when do you plan to ship it? So our Kickstarter only ended on Monday this week. So it's still very soon at the moment. Our estimated shipping date is going to be September next year. Uh, do you expect it to be uh, translated for French audiences? At present, this Kickstarter is only in English. Um, when it comes to retail, I'm not so honestly sure on that one. You'd need to ask some of our production guys rather than the design guy. But certainly, it's certainly something we should probably be looking at. So yes, I'd be surprised if we didn't. Okay, thank you very much uh, for that overview of Resident Evil 2 The Game. And let's see you on Ludovox. Bye-bye.